Hello, this is Geo Techland, and today I'll be taking a look at some of my favorite Linux distros and actually commenting on what they do well and what they could improve on. I'm mostly going to look at this from the perspective of a user coming from Windows or Mac and what I would think they'd want to see in a Linux distro and things that can impress them. So let's take a look. If you like my content, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, Peertube, and you can follow me on Odyssey. All right, so first up we have Ubuntu, and Ubuntu is one of the more popular Linux distros, although these days they've gotten a lot more competition in the Linux desktop space. A few things they do well with their OS is that their theme by default looks really good, and they have as of late given the user more options although there are distros that give you more options in terms of changing the theme and color one thing that i see as both good and bad is that ubuntu is always trying to push new ideas forward sometimes they're hit or miss like snaps snaps allow developers to publish apps and for them to work consistently across multiple linux distros but it's not as decentralized like flat packs so again, I see some good and some bad there. One other area they could improve on is, although they're, they're fairly active on social media, they could do a lot more to engage with the community, I think. Next up, we have Linux Mint. Linux Mint is also very popular. It looks very much like Windows and things just work out of the box. Even though it's very familiar to Windows, I feel like they still could uh, improve their default theme their default theme has always had like a very grayish kind of bland looking color. And while they do offer a lot of options to change that, in my mind, I feel like users coming to Linux for the first time should get a much better first impression in terms of uh, the look and feel of the system. A few things they could improve on is their engagement. They don't seem to really engage with the community that much on social media, at least. They do have a blog post at least, but they don't post that frequently. So that's something that they could improve on and you know just to get users more excited for their distro linux mint is very stable and they just provide a very you could say first class desktop experience with lots of little features next up we have zorin zorin is a very nice looking beautiful linux distro by default they have arguably one of the best if not the best looking linux theme and I think this is good because if a new user is coming from Windows to Linux and they use Zorin, they'll be very impressed by the look and feel. It'll feel like a very top-notch experience for them. One thing they've, you could say, pioneered is that they have a layout chooser that kind of makes it uh, very user-friendly to change the look of your layout. This is the free version of Zorin, but in their paid version, they also have an additional Mac OS uh, layout option. And I think that's important. I feel like every theme or desktop environment should have a layout chooser that way it gives the user a lot of choice and a lot of power to control their their own linux distro one thing they could also do is to just be more engaging in the community you know they post every once in a while on social media and they do have a blog but they don't post frequently on their blog so you're not really seeing what they're doing new or what's coming in the next iteration of zorin next up we have elementary os and this OS set to be a replacement for Windows and Mac, although it does have more of a Mac feel to it. Although they're not as active on social media with the main elementary social media accounts, their creators are always posting what they're working on with elementary. I think they're the best when it comes to that because it just gets people excited about what's coming up in their OS and it just gets the community more engaged and, and provide feedback as well. In their blog, they do post pretty frequently and they just showcase what they're working on, which is this uh, dark theme and theme customization changes that are coming in the next version, giving the user a lot of choice here. And that's been one of my main critiques of them is that they didn't really give the user a lot of choice out of the box, especially if you're a new user to Linux. And now they'll be letting you choose a dark theme and choose the accent colors. It's going to improve the OS a lot, in my opinion. One thing they could improve on, just like with Linux Mint, they're using a very bland default gray theme. So I think it just wouldn't give 
new users to Linux a good first impression. I mean, it's not that bad and I know it's very subjective. Next up, we have Manjaro and Manjaro is also an OS that's extremely popular. It comes in many different flavors and they have such a big community that even some members of the community manage different flavors of Manjaro. They do engage quite a bit in their social media accounts and you know you kind of get a good sample of what's coming up or what they're working on and there's just wide support for not just desktop linux but also linux smartphones and arm-based laptops like the pinebook and the pinephone one thing they could do better is improving their default themes on probably all of their os's and I mean, they're not terrible, but I feel like that's an area where they could improve on and just having a much nicer default theme. And in their Manjaro GNOME version, at least, they have a layout chooser similar to the one you see on Zorin. And so I think that's good. I feel like every theme or desktop environment should have a layout chooser. That's I think it's going to be really beneficial to Windows and Mac users coming to Linux. Next up, we have Solus. Solus is a rolling release distro just like manjaro they're also the creators of solus budgie which is a very windows 10 like layout and theme what i like about solus is that and this is very subjective and it's very much a personal opinion their choices of theme and icons it's really good and they've influenced me a lot because i started using the papyrus icons because of them and even the plata nowhere theme that comes included by default on solus not just solus budgie but also solus gnome it's what I use usually, whether I have Manjaro, I'll usually switch to using the same icons and theme that Solus has. So they have really good taste when it comes to the theme and layout. And I think new users coming to Solus will be impressed with what they've got here. One thing they could improve on again is their engagement. They don't really post that much on social media, but when they do post, they do have uh, streams where they're doing live coding, which is really nice. So I guess it's kind of more of a mixed bag there. And another area they could improve on is that because it is a rolling release, sometimes if you have newer hardware and you try to install one of their point releases, a lot of times you'll get kernels and drivers that are out of date and so you can't really install the OS. So I've had this issue with like my AMD graphics cards that I have to wait till their next point release at least to do a fresh install. So I feel like if they released more um, point releases then I think it would be a much better experience. And last but not least we have Top OS which is made by the team over at System76. A few things they do well is that they're pretty active on social media so you get a good sample of what they're doing. They're doing a lot of things for Linux when it comes to open source firmware and just providing pre-installed Linux laptops and desktops. In terms of their OS, when it comes to their theme, the actual look and feel of it is actually pretty nice and they do a lot of unique things to the look. The only downside of the out of the box experience is that it does come with stock GNOME and stock GNOME itself, I feel like for a new user coming from Windows or Mac, it's not really intuitive. There's no minimize, no maximize buttons. The panel for apps is hidden unless you hit like the activities menu. So I feel like that might alienate a lot of users uh, trying Pop! OS for the first time. And just like Zorin and Manjaro GNOME, I feel like Pop! OS should have a layout chooser. Even though they do advertise their hardware to power users that could probably make those changes themselves. I feel like if they wanted to reach out to the average users more, I think having a layout chooser would be really good. One interesting thing with all these Linux distros is that they all seem to do a lot of things very well and I think all of them make each other better and that's the beauty and power of Linux and open source is that many different distros can work independently but also work together with certain things and you know bounce bounce ideas off each other so i think it's a very nice thing but let me know what you think do you agree or disagree with my critiques of these linux distros let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like share subscribe and i will see you all next time